Hey guys, Mike here. Today we're filming How to Make an App, Part 2. Okay, in the last episode, we had a. Let me just press back, sorry. Control C, Control C, Control C, Control C. I filmed a video before this, but it got corrupted, so I'm remaking it. Oh yeah. In the last episode, which is linked below if you haven't seen it, we created this with a green box down here. That green box is now going to be our navigation menu. A navigation menu is going to be kind of a slide out curtain effect. So when the user presses the button, it's going to slide out like this and stay like that. And then here we're going to have a list of different stuff they can do. So say settings, uh, contact, home, etc. Then when they press the back button, which will be up here, it'll slide back in. Okay, let's get started. First you want to grab your, your green cube that you created, you just want to drag it over to the left side until it turns orange, so I'll just make it square. Until it turns orange, then drag it down, and then up. That's the right. Make sure it's orange on each edge of the canvas. Okay, then we're going to anchor it in the center, which this already is. Uh, you need to click the bottom right one, which means it will just expand both height and width determined, determined by the screen size. So if we resize it, it should be good. Yep. So that's my computer beep, it's overheating. Okay, now, the easiest way to do this is not to actually tell a script to change the width, but to instead change this into an image. So we're going to click the settings icon up here and we're going to do remove component. We're just going to remove the whole raw image. Then we're going to click add component, UI, image. Okay. Uh, as you can see there's a drop box here, not a drop box, a uh, selection box here that lets you put a sprite in. We just want a white box. You can create this by opening Microsoft Paint if you're on a PC, then you just want to create a cube 128 by 128 pixels. It's pretty easy. Just drag it up and down. Okay. Then you want to click Save As, Documents, find your folder. This is your project folder that you named when you create your Unity project. Mine was called YouTube. Then click Assets, and then if you don't have this folder, just right click, click New, Ooh. and then click Folder. Call it UI. I don't need that though, so no. And then click save once you've named it and then put it as PNG. Okay. Double check that the image is now a sprite by clicking the image in your project view. Then up here, top right, it says sprite. Click that, then click apply. Okay. Now we want to go into our script recorded called UI Handler. And let me just delete that because it's a fail. We're going to create a new line and we're going to type public void nav start, which is going to start the navigation. Which is a weird name, call it whatever you want. Um, not void. Okay. So. As you can see, let me just show you. I should rename this first. I so click the raw image, then press F2, and type nav. Okay. In our image, we have a new drop down. It says simple, slice, tiled, or filled. We're going to click filled. And then some more drop boxes up here. We'll click horizontal and left. Now, if I drag this, it'll make a curtain effect, which is exactly what we need. Although, if I put it to zero, which is when our navigation is not open, hold on, let me just fix that. You will see that our button no longer works, because it is actually under this image, even though you can't see it. See if I try to click it, if I try to hover over it, it doesn't do anything.
Therefore, when its when its val uh, fill amount is zero, when the nav is not open, we need to make sure that it's not active, because if it's not active, then your cursor can't interact with it. So our, our button now works. It did work. I don't know what just happened. Let's see. So if we click, hover over it, you can see it's interact. The mouse is interacting with it, and the nav is still set active. But if we click it, then the nav is now active because of our old script. Sorry. Um. Sorry. I need to close that. Okay. So back to the script. So nav start. We're gonna do. Uh, okay, up here. Okay, so image here is actually the nav bar from because it was the green cube that we created in the first episode. Then we dragged it in. That's now the navigation bar. So we'll re we'll change that from image to nav, and we'll change game object to image with a capital I. And if you haven't done this, make sure to do it now because otherwise it won't work. You control D on Unity Engine. Or highlight it, control C, and then control V. And then paste it underneath it and type dot UI after Unity Engine. This will import all of the Unity 5 UI features. Okay. So when they click, when they click the button to open the nav menu, we want to make sure that the navigation activates itself. So nav dot game object. Ooh. Game object dot set active true. And should we get rid of that? Yeah, let's get rid of that because we, we don't really need that anymore. Which is for example. Okay. So nav dot game object dot set active true. Let's see if that works. So click on a as you can see, because we changed the name and its type, it's now gotten rid of the navbar that we dragged in. So drag that back in, press play. Oh, sorry, go back to the button. It should be in the canvas, this button here. And for the on click, we want to change it to UI handler nav start. Okay, let's just for example set that to one. So if we click it, it's now active. Awesome. It's going to be like that normally. So let's just change that back. So uh, fill amount zero. So if I click it again, it's now active. Okay. Although, no, we'll change that later. Okay, so create a new line. And we're gonna write, sorry, whoops, nav dot fill amount equals zero dot two five. This is an example to show you how we're gonna do it. So now, if we press play, what does that say? Oh, make sure when you have a decimal at zero dot two five, put an F at the end. Make it a float, not a double. Now press play. Click the button. Here we go. Fill amount 0 0.25. Now we want it to slide smoothly. So we're going to make a coroutine. Going to type start. C O R O U T I N E. And here we're going to type. What should we call it? Call it start slide okay awesome now down here type I E N U M E R A T O R I guess I spelled that right yes I did and start slide cool cool so now Type it here. 
if we do yield return new wait for seconds two it'll wait for two seconds after this has been called here which is after we click the button and then it'll say test one two three in console okay so we'll press play see two seconds says test one two three that's awesome okay so we're gonna type um get down over to nav dot fill amount equals nav dot fill amount plus zero dot one I'm going to change this interval to 0.01f is a float value and then if nav.fill amount is less than 1 which is its max value which means it'll be fully fully filled then we want it to repeat so we'll just copy start protein else debug.log done All right, let's give that a test oh make sure you put a semicolon on the end of that and an F Click the button. As you can see, it's quite smooth. Might be a little bit faster. Let's just have a look. Hmm. No, I kind of like that to be honest. Okay, I'm gonna change the color. You can do the same if you want. You don't have to. Let's see what black looks like. Uh, don't really like that. What about this blue? Yep, yeah, that'll do. Okay, now we've got the basic concept, like a curtain effect. We wanna we wanna expand on that. We wanna put the text in here, have some links. So So I'm just trying to think if we should have the text slide with it. Or for just fade in. Um. Hmm. I think we'll have it slide in. Okay. So. Grab the nav. Set it to fill amount one. While we set everything up. And then go. Oh, actually, we can click on nav. UI button. Make it a bit bigger. Hold shift, then click that drag it out put that one there that one there and that will do then click on the button actually you can press control click to click on two so click there and then click control click on both the buttons and for the image we want to change it to the image that we created so scroll up click box and as you can see it gets rid of that weird effect that unity included I don't really like it and we're gonna also make this filled so that oh whoops so that we can um slide it along with the nav bar so we're gonna click horizontal and left like that we'll fix the text later don't worry about that all right uh, first we need to anchor that um, I think the easiest way would be if we scroll up a bit. Yep, put it up there. Click the top button. We want it to stay at the top, so we'll click the top. I think that should work. Yep, that's good. 
Okay, so when the navigation scrolls out, we want these two buttons. We'll just rename them. We've got it one and two. Again, you just click on and press F2 to change it. It's the easiest way. Okay, so one and two. We want one and two fill amount to equal the fill amount of nav. Okay? So in order to do that, we could use an array, but since there's only two buttons, we'll do it this way. We'll take public um, uh, image one, uh, one. We'll just copy and paste that, call that two. We'll call it B1 and B2. Bananas, in pajamas. Um, bone to one, okay. Then down here, we need these to match. We'll do control C, control V, control V. We'll change these to match the buttons. So bone. Bone. <laughs> and Betwo. Okay. I think that should work. Let's have a look. Oh, what is that button there? Okay, we've got that in error. As you can see, that didn't drag out. That's probably why. And the object reference not set to an instance of an object because, of course, I forgot to drag it in. So go main camera, drag bone in, which is one, and B12, which is two. I don't know why I'm calling it that. It's a bit weird. Change it if you want. Okay, that button's like that because we didn't set the anchor, which is not very good of us. I think that slid did the button slide, I didn't quite see. Um, I think it did, no? Should we just slow it down a bit? So we'll do plus zero dot zero one. You can play around with these figures by the way, if they're not smooth enough for you. Make them slow or fast, depends on your preference. You can also have the navbar slide up and then down if you want, pretty straightforward. Also it does in fact work, it's a bit slow, that's just because of the different sizes. If we match the width then it'll be fine, but to be honest we're going so fast that it's, it's really not going to matter. No one's going to notice unless it lags out, which hopefully it doesn't. We'll do an FPS test at the end of this video. Or the end of this series, should I say. Okay, first let's fix this button, because that's not very good. So we'll scroll it down, we'll put about here. There, then we'll click top. Here we go. Right, that's awesome, but I just realized there's nothing to take it back, so we'll create a back button. So go to nav, activate it, shift click for all of them, and then do fill amount one. Um, pull these buttons down a bit, and then up the top, we'll create, oh, click on nav, right click nav, click UI, then click. Uh, we'll click button. I'm going to resize that, put it at the top right or wherever you want your button to go. Scroll in. Scroll in with the mouse wheel, by the way. Okay, in the rect transform, we can change the width to match the height so that's a square. We'll set it to 50 50. Um, okay. It's a bit weird. Uh, it's better. You can obviously set the image how you like, because obviously this does not look good. 
Alright, I'm just gonna go like that. It's not very practical, so don't do this <laughs> for the resizing and stuff. But it looks good, so I'm gonna keep that and then change button to return. F2 on it. Okay, and we're gonna do press plus button on that to create another list item, then drag the main camera into there. Go UI handler, nav start. Okay, so we're gonna create a new ball here. That boolean so that says detects whether it's false or uh, active or not active so if it is active then we want it to minus the fill amount so that it goes down if it is active then it just goes up obviously so we're going to type if nav dot active and then if active so if it is active you can type nav.active and it means that it's true if you put this here then it means that it's false okay so if nav active is false then do this if that's not there then it's if nav.active true then do that we're gonna put that there what is that called i can't remember that's not very good of me let me just google that i feel like an idiot right now exclamation mark <laughs> okay i should go back to school um so if it's not active do you want it to activate itself so there we go put a curly bracket into that then else if it's not active so control v control c control v curly bracket then we want it to ah sorry we want it to do reverse start slide so the way we're going to do that is we are going to in here we're going to type one control seal that put in the else statement and set this one to negative one and here we're going to type int i and instead of 0.1f we're going to type i okay i i actually we're going to change this to 0.1f and change int to float negative 0.1 if okay so if if the navigation is starting up then it's going to expand and it's going to slide up so it has to be a positive amount so 0 0.1 which is going to be fill amount plus 0 0.1 but if it's not active then it's uh, if it is active sorry then it's going to scroll down is that the wrong way? I oh, know I just have an exclamation mark there on accident. Then it's going to scroll down, so it needs a negative value. So nav fill amount plus negative 0 0.1 is going to take 0 0.1 away. Okay. So let's test that out. Is everything okay? I think so. Oh, sorry. Since we're directly accessing image and not game object, we need to type. Um, where is it? Then we need to type nav dot game object. Make sure you do a lowercase g for this one. Okay, nav dot that should work. Let's have a look. Ah, uh, no mirrors. Two arguments. Oh, down here. So we just want that to be I. So that's just repeating it. Okay, so if nav dot fill amount is less than one and more than zero, nav dot fill amount is more than zero because we want it to stop if it's at one or zero because zero means that the navigation has closed one means that it has fully opened okay so um, that looks good to me now we want to do an if statement we're gonna write if nav dot fill amount is equal to zero we want to disable 
the game object. So we're going to type nav dot game object dot set active false. Awesome. Let's give that a test. We've got a passing error, which means that you've got an extra curly bracket. So we'll just create one there, just in case we need to put more in here. Press play. And... There we go. Text is a bit funny, we'll change it in the next um, video. That's pretty cool. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video.